If you've ever sat and watched birds flying around and catching insects on the wing, or squirrels leaping between trees at breakneck speeds like furry little tree ninjas, it's hard not to imagine that they live their lives at different speeds. It's like they have superpowers. Yeah, so the premise of our audio piece was um, whether or not animals can hear or see time in the same way that we do. So we, are we all living in the same sort of temporal plane? Does time mean the same thing for me and you as it does to a bird? or a fly or other animals. Yeah, and it's sort of, I mean, there's no doubt that different animals have different temporal kind of acuity. They can, they can see stuff in um, with more frames per second. The question we also wanted to dip our toes into was sort of outside of the rugged science into the sort of philosophical fringes. What did that, what were those experiences like for those other animals? Were they experiencing more time? Which you can't really answer. Which well, we still disagree about it, don't we? We, can, we kind of do. Kind yeah. of. What I found quite interesting about what we discovered during the making of this program is that animals do have different ways of experiencing the world around us, almost sort of super senses. And you don't think of time perception as a sense that we have, and it's kind of not. The whole purpose of the program was to discuss how other senses might influence time perception in humans and other animals. And what we discovered is that a blowfly that you know flies into this room might be surrounded by a disco-like light show because the lights all around it are flashing at a particular rate that it can actually see. It can see the darkness between the flashes. Yeah. So flies are in like discos and then deep sea fish that had a flicker fusion rate of like one every second or few seconds, everything was like a big magic mushroom kind of blur. So the animal kingdom just sounds like a right old party, to be honest. The topic of the program, A Sense of Time, is actually quite a sort of philosophical topic, obviously. And you can never know what it's like to be in another human, let alone another animal. And of course, you can't ask another animal but there is this amazing feature of their biology, which is this thing called the flicker fusion rate in their eyes. The best way to describe the flicker fusion rate is um, with an analogy to a camera. It's basically the frame rate of a camera. It's how many images per second a particular animal is taking in and processing in its brain. The reason the flicker fusion rate was such a useful concept for us was that we were trying to put ourselves and our listeners in the minds of different animals, which is obviously impossible. Um, but um, the flick of fusion rate is this way in, it's this way of objectively studying something which might be analogous or in some way related to an animal's perception of time. So in the programme we looked at both the flick of fusion rate but also at whether animals experience time through their hearing in a particular way and a really good bridge to get into that was looking at bats because of course they use echolocation. When we met um, the Israeli bat specialist and went to his bat lab, he was basically telling us that they use their ears to kind of see, but they kind of see time. They, they make a map of the world based on how long their little squeaks take to bounce back to them. So they, they see time, like in a very real sense, what that means subjectively. But, but with their ears, because we were studying. See with their ears, but yeah. pos potentially processing with a visual component of their brain. Yeah, but then he was kind of putting it to us in a way that it, they're not seeing it at all. So we, when we think of a bat seeing with echolocation, we automatically imagine pictures, but in their mind, it, this time perception is, it could be just a, a series of... This is what we see what I mean. It's just one of those topics that you yeah. could... Um. <laughs> I think that where the story came from is quite complicated, um, but it was a mixture of things. You, you filmed something on your phone, didn't no. you? I filmed some Swifts on my phone, and I happened to accidentally film them in slow motion out my window of my flat. And when I played it back, the sound was awesome. So I showed that to you and we were discussing whether or not the birds were hearing in slow motion because the sound of a swift when it's calling is a bit like a scream, but when you play it in slow motion, you can hear distinct notes, which was fascinating. Yeah. And then what happened? We were on another program and we met this amazing sound recordist called Chris Watson in the UK, and he slowed down some bird song for us. That was for a program about animal accents, long story short, uh, six months later after a long standing argument about why I can't sort of swap flies with a newspaper and whether birds are hearing in slow motion. We got this um, documentary kind of commissioned and it went from there. And I'm very disappointed to tell you that there were no flies harmed in the making of this programme.